Hi, my name is Jean, and I want you to add your voice to our journey into China. Because accelerating success in China through learning Chinese language and culture is about the application of key Chinese cultural concepts in the proper cultural context. Every week, I create a LinkedIn post to get others' perspectives on one of 10 Chinese cultural concepts that I believe are misunderstood, but essential for understanding how Chinese people think, why they behave the way they do, and how to create more positive communication patterns that lead to more constructive cooperation. This week's Chinese cultural concept is gei mianzi, which means giving face. Perhaps you've heard of this term, and maybe you even know what it means. I'm sure you do. But we've received tons of comments this week, so let's listen to some of the top comments and see what additional insights we can learn. Now, Dennis says, I worked in France, and for them, positive praise is uncommon in a professional context. An American director who wants to encourage a French employee might say, good job, Matthew, to which Matthew would respond, c'est normal, nothing special. A habit of compliments would be viewed as insincere or even worse. In a French business context, people express conflict and differences of opinion openly and directly. So giving face becomes really a soft skill which requires a lot of patience. To which Dr. Serna replied, that's a really good point. Any action would be interpreted differently and has different effects depending on the cultural context. That being said, may I ask, what would French people do to give face? To which Dennis replied, that's a great question. So instead of empty praise, the French appreciate being asked their opinion or advice. Thoughts, abstract ideas, and concepts are all highly valued in France. So the Chi in Chinese culture, it obviously depends on the situation. So context is also important for getting a positive reaction. Chinese people do appreciate praise as this is an integral aspect of their face-giving culture. But that said, asking for their opinion or advice is also considered a face-giving gesture because it shows respect. So it's really important that we try to find the right balance between asking for advice and also offering praise depending on the cultural context. And then Christina added, it's also critical not to openly criticize them as they may lose face and consequently distrust you, possibly permanently. Disrupting harmony is a major thing to avoid in China, so being patient and investing time in strengthening guanxi is paramount. Well said, Christina. You know, I believe humans lack patience as a species, so I constantly try to increase my curiosity in that which is different because I believe curiosity leads to empathy while our natural inclinations tend to be more judgmental. And then Ian said, if you can laugh at yourself, you're invincible. To which Manford commented, so what about the host who says, which surely is self-deprecating, is it not? So I think this is a quote that Chinese hosts sometimes use. Uh, to which Ian uh, noted that, you know, up till the age of about 40, Chinese people may present themselves a little bit more seriously than necessary. But otherwise, I like uh, Zhuangzi, the Taoist author, and that is a book that is a riot of self-deprecation. So anyway, so this was a lengthy discussion and I had to selectively choose quotes. Otherwise, this video would just be far too long. But I think it's worth reminding that China is not homogeneous, not by language, not by or local dialect, not by customs, not by food, and especially not by age demographics. So they separated. Zhou Ling Ho means 90s generation. Ling Ling Ho means born after 2000, etc. So uh, many of the observations that people talk about, including in this discussion, are static. But Chinese culture is trending in many different directions for the different groups of people within China. Now, Julia says, in many ways, giving face is similar to the Western idea of reputation. 
I remember as a student being taught that the best way to give face is by showing respect. This could be giving someone a compliment, toasting at a banquet, paying a bill, presenting a gift or a present, and really just keeping your word or helping someone in need. So again, these are all excellent points. Um, you know, a lot of Western Westerners who aren't familiar with China associate giving face as something that is corrupt or unethical, which Juliet has reminded me, it's not always the case and usually it isn't the case. And then Guan said, uh, it is important to understand how to give face, receive face and lose face. Timing, the giver, the gift, and the recipient are all components to be taken into account. And then Grace added, uh, through my experience, giving flattery or praise in a Western cultural context is mostly done with words, whereas giving face also means showing respect in the Chinese cultural context. For example, when, uh, when someone dresses up for friends' important ceremonies, business meetings, or special occasions that would be given face. And then Anastasia gave us a ton of insights on the Russian cultural context of giving face, which has many similarities and slight differences with Chinese culture. So I encourage you to click on the link below for the post and join the conversation. We have over 80 comments and counting in less than a week. Uh, and then I also wanna give my personal thanks to Simone, one of my favorite artistic content creators who talks about the real China, Christina, who is a cross-cultural instructor and coach, teacher Li Ping, who specializes in Chinese business communications, and Todd, who's written a book called The Heart of China, How Mindfulness Changed My Life. Um, their comments are in the, uh, the post. Uh, you will find the links to not only connect to the post, but also to connect with them in the description so you can see, uh, hear more of their opinions directly. So I hope this expands your understanding and application of giving face, which is one of the cornerstones of developing real guanxi relationships in China. And again, improving how we cooperate across cultural and value differences is a never ending journey. And this conversation is ongoing. Just follow the links to connect with our contributors and engage with them directly. You can also share your experiences, insights, or just ask the question, which I'm sure we'd all love to answer. Okay, now see you in the next post where we will discuss the Chinese iron rice bowl mentality.